everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline and I create knitting content here on YouTube. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this super simple tank top. So what's nice about this tank top is that it's great for a beginner knitter. So basically all we do is we cast on around the bottom, join in the round, then down here we have a fun little section where we do alternate between knits and purls just to create that little texture down at the bottom. And this also prevents the bottom edge from curling up. Then we just continue knitting up until the underarm portion. There we're going to split into the back and the front, and then we're going to knit the front flat and the back flat. The last thing we do is we just add on the little shoulder straps, and you can make your shoulder straps out of any kind of fabric you'd like to. I just chose little denim fabric because I like the way it looks. And what's really great about this project is that it's really simple and it's also a quick knit. Um, so it's knit using holding two strands of yarn together. Um, and I'll show you the yarn I used in just one second. Um, but it be like the colors I chose created this really nice kind of dull blue fabric, and I think it looks really pretty and summery. So down in the description box below, you're gonna find the full written version of the pattern. You're also gonna find the different video breakpoints, so that way if you want to fast forward or rewind to any specific section of the video, you can do that. And you're also gonna find the full list of materials I used to make my version. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave those down below. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Starting off first with the yarn I'm using. So I'm using two different yarns held together. So the first yarn is one of these Karen cotton cakes. And these ones come in either variegated colors or the solids. I just chose the solid white color. And so, okay, so the color name is just white. This one, 60% cotton, 40% acrylic. And what you're gonna be looking for is that size medium yarn. So you're gonna want it to be a number four. And these are really large skeins. So for example, this one has 530 yards or 485 meters. So that's the first color I'm using. And then with that, I'm holding with it another really pretty yarn. So this one, let me just grab the label. This one is loops and threads, um, cotton colors. This one has slightly less yards. This one has 394 yards or 360 meters. But again, it's a number four. So you wanna make sure you're holding two number fours together. Um, so you get the same weight that I'm using. And this colorway is called Starfish, if you're curious about this one. And I think this one might be exclusive to Michael's, this brand. Um, I do know that I did purchase both these at Michael's last night, so <laughs> you can definitely get them both there. If I can find them anywhere else on the internet, I'll link them down below as well. So I'm actually holding these two yarns together. So before I start the project, I'm going to basically, what I like to do is I like to actually create a new ball of yarn where I basically just have both the strands together already because I find it kind of annoying to have both of them going at the same time. So I'm basically going to combine them first and then knit from my new ball of yarn. So I've now finished combining those two strands and it doesn't take very long. It only takes about 10 minutes or so, um, but it's definitely optional. You can just hold both strands together as you're working from the two separate balls of yarn. I just prefer to do it this way. And then I did just want to mention the other supplies that you should have ready. So first we have one tapestry needle. And then second, I have two stitch markers and then two stitch markers should be different. So the way I'm gonna be doing it in my work is gonna be this little bird is gonna be my beginning of the round marker. And then this pink plastic one is gonna be the one basically for the other side. Since we're knitting in the round, I'm gonna have my beginning of the round one and then my stitch marker for halfway through. And that'll be helpful for me to identify the decreases along each side. As we start at the bottom, we're gonna decrease up towards the top just to give the tank top a little bit of a taper. Next up for my knitting needle, the knitting needle size I'm going to be using is a size US 10. So a US 10, this one hasn't worn off yet, so I'll tell you right here. It looks like it says it's a six millimeter needle. And you're going to want to use between like a 24 inch cord to a 32 inch cord. And I just find that's a good length. So basically there's plenty of room for the sweater to move around the, around the cord, but it's not too big to where there's extra gaps. So I'm going to be casting on the 34 inch size and the way the different sizing methods work are the sizes like the 34 inch that's going to be the bust measurement and then down at the bottom we're going to actually cast on four inches plus whatever the bust measurement is that way it can have a little bit of a taper as it goes up. 
So for the 34 inch bust, I'm actually gonna be casting on the equivalent of 38 inches worth of stitches. But for whatever size you're knitting, be sure to just check out the pattern down below. And the method I'm gonna be using to cast these on is I'm just gonna be using the long tail cast on. You can use whatever cast on method you prefer. I just like this one because it does create a really nice, clean and stretchy edge. And again here, I am holding both of the strands together as I'm casting on. Now that I've cast out all the stitches, I also placed my one stitch marker that is in my beginning of the round marker halfway through the stitches. And now I'm gonna prepare to join in the round. So the way I do that is I just lay my work down in a circle and I like to turn it so all the cast on bumps are facing in towards the center. Okay, so it doesn't look twisted at all. So now I'm just gonna pick up both needles and I just kind of put them parallel to each other. And now I'm going to check one more time that nothing's twisted. So now if I push all the bumps downwards, that's more thunder if you can hear that. If I push all the bumps downwards, nothing should be twisted. Okay, so it looks all good. So that's just a double check because you never want to start off your work twisted because there's essentially no way to fix it. So you want to make sure that you're starting off on a good foot and it isn't twisted. Now under the knitting needle that has my working yarn come out of it, I'm gonna place my stitch marker. And then with that knitting needle, I'm just gonna go right into the first stitch on this front knitting needle. And I'm actually gonna start off with a purl stitch. And I'm gonna purl one entire round. And for the first two inches, we're just gonna be alternating between purl rows and knit rows. And what this does is it creates a really nice base and it prevents the work from curling up around the bottom. So again, I'm gonna purl this entire row. Then once I get back to my beginning of the marker round, I'm gonna switch over to knitting an entire row. And I'm gonna keep going back and forth between purling and knitting for two inches. And I'm just gonna measure that from the bottom of my work up until the bottom of the knitting needle. I'm gonna stop recording now so you guys don't hear too much thunder. So I've now finished that two inches down here at the bottom. So now I'm ready to begin the decrease portion of my work. Now in this portion, we're gonna be knitting for 13 inches. And again, we're just gonna be knitting every single round. The only trick here is that every couple of rounds, we need to throw in a decrease round. So we wanna decrease a total of 14 stitches. And every decrease round that we put in is gonna decrease two stitches. We're gonna decrease right before this stitch marker, the basically like halfway through stitch marker. And then we're gonna decrease right before this beginning of the round stitch marker. So basically like at the end of the round. So the way I'm gonna do this is first, I'm gonna knit six rounds and then I'm gonna place my first decrease round. Once you finish placing all your decrease rounds, so it'll be like every inch and a half or so, place a decrease round for whatever your row gauge is. Then you're just gonna wanna continue knitting until just this knit portion measures 13 inches or from the bottom edge, it measures 15 inches. So that's how we're gonna be working these. So first I'm gonna work up until I'm ready to place my first decrease round. And I did wanna note too, if you wanted to make yours any longer or shorter, this would be a great place to do that. So if you wanted to make yours longer, I would just add a couple more rounds before you put in that first decrease round. Or if you need to make yours shorter, I would just start off immediately with the decrease round rather than working the couple of rows first. So again, I'm just gonna continue working about six rounds and then I'll come back and show you how I'm gonna put in that decrease. So now I've knit those six rounds. So I'm ready to do a decrease round. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna knit until two stitches before my middle of the round marker. And then I'm gonna work and knit two together. So first let me knit all the way over there. And again, you wanna make sure you have two stitches before that marker. And now to work that knit two together, I'm just gonna take my right needle point and go into the front, kind of from the left to the right of both of those stitches. So I go through the center of both of them, wrap my yarn around the back needle, and then just pull through. So I just turn those two stitches into one stitch. Now I'm just gonna 
past my stitch marker. And now I'm going to continue knitting until two stitches before my beginning of the round marker. And I'm going to again work and knit two together of those stitches. And I'm just going to continue repeating this round just about every inch and a half. And once I've completed all the decrease rounds, I'm going to continue working until my piece measures 15 inches from this bottom edge. Now, if you did decide to make yours a little bit longer or shorter, just make sure to take that into account when you're measuring how long yours should be. So I finished working the main portion of my tank top. So now I'm ready to cast off some stitches. And where I'm going to be casting off stitches is basically right around my center of the round marker. So I'm going to cast off an even number on each side. And then also at the beginning of the round, I want to cast off a few stitches from either side. So again, you're going to want to look at the pattern down below to know exactly how many stitches to cast off for your size. For the size I'm knitting, I need to cast off three stitches on either side of my middle of the round marker. So six stitches total on one side. And then I need to do three stitches on either side of my beginning of the round marker. So again, six stitches on this side. And basically where these stitches are going to be is just going to be like underneath each one of your arms. So to start off, I'm going to knit over until I have three stitches remaining before my middle of the round stitch marker. Okay, so I'm all ready to start casting off those three stitches on either side of my middle of the round marker, so six stitches total. So the way I actually cast off this first stitch here is I'm going to knit that, then knit the next stitch. Now I'm going to take the previous stitch and I'm going to go up, over, and off that second stitch. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to knit the next stitch, take the previous stitch, and go up, over, and off. So now I've cast off two, and I need to do a total of six. Okay, so I just finished my sixth one. Now again, I'm going to knit until I'm three stitches before my beginning of the round marker. So now again here, I'm ready to cast off the six stitches around my um, beginning of the round marker, and I'm going to do it exactly the same way. So I'm going to knit the first stitch, knit the second stitch, then pass that previous first stitch up, over, and off. So that was me casting off my first stitch, and now I just do that a total of six times. So knit the next stitch, pass the previous one over, over, over and off, now cast off two, three, four, five, and six. So now that I've cast off those stitches, I'm actually going to begin working flat. So the way I like to do this is I'm just going to take this first stitch and I'm just going to pass that over to my left needle, just because that stitch is technically part of the front side of my sweater. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a tapestry needle and some waist yarn and I want to slide all my back stitches onto this waist yarn. So the back stitches are going to be the ones that we just worked across before we did that final decrease, or sorry, final cast off. So I'm just going to go along and slide all those stitches off my needle and onto the waist yarn all the way until we get to where that middle of the round is. And I typically just tie my waist yarn into a little bow just to secure it a little bit more. And now I'm ready to just focus on the front side of my sweater. Or sorry, tank top. I'm already getting confused because I'm so used to knitting sweaters. So I want to go back over to my beginning of the row where that working yarn is coming out. And again, we have already worked that first stitch, so I'm going to slide that one back over onto my right needle. And going across this first row, it's going to be a decrease row. So to start off, I've already worked the first stitch, so I'm going to do a slip slip knit. Then I'm going to knit until three stitches remain. Now that I'm on this side, I'm going to do a knit two together. And then I'm just going to knit the final stitch. 
Now I'm going to turn my work because again, now we're knitting flat. And after each decrease row, the first thing you want to do is you want to slip the first stitch purl wise, and then you want to purl across the remainder of the row. So every time you do a decrease row, you want to then slip the first stitch purl wise and purl all the way across. I'm now finished purling across, so again I'm going to turn my work. And now on this side, I didn't have the opportunity to do this on the last um, decrease row, just because I had already worked that stitch. But again, on the knit side, you always want to slip that first stitch purlwise, and then just work your decrease. So in this case, it's going to be a slip slip knit. Knit until three stitches remain, knit two together, and then knit the final stitch. So again, the key on this portion is that you always want to slip the first stitch, and that's going to be the same all the way up this front side. And that's just going to create a really nice edge all the way up the side. And you're just going to want to work the number of decrease rows for your given size. So for example, my size, I need to get um, work a total of seven decrease rows. So that means I have to do seven of these where I knit and decrease, and then I need a purl after each one. So now I've finished doing all the decreases on the front side. And so for the last four rows, I'm just going to knit every single row. So I've already slipped the first stitch purl wise and then knit all the way across the first one. So now for the second row, I'm just going to turn my work and where I usually purl again, I'm just going to slip my first stitch purl wise. This time I'm going to bring my yarn to the back and then I'm going to knit all the way across this row. So we're just going to knit the last four rows again, making sure to slip that first stitch. And then I'll come back and show you how to do that final bind off on this side. So the final step here is just going to be to cast off this edge. And to do this, we're going to do it the exact same way that we did for underneath the arms. The only thing that I usually do differently is I'm actually going to slip this first stitch purl wise, then bring my yarn to the back, knit the first stitch. And now again, I'm going to slip the stitch that's further away up over and off the needle. So then the repeat becomes knit the next stitch, slip the previous stitch up over and off. And I'm just going to continue doing this all the way across this edge. And eventually you'll end up with just one loop on your right hand needle. So then what I'll typically do is I'll just break my yarn here. You don't need that long of a tail. So I'd probably just leave around an eight inch tail just to weave it in later on. And then I just thread the tail through the remaining stitch just to secure it in place. Then we can move on to the back side. So the back side is going to be done really similarly to the front. The only trick here that I'm going to show is going to be how to pick up these stitches from the waist yarn. So to do that, the nice thing about using a circular knitting needle is that you can pick it up from either direction. So I'm just going to start over here at the right hand side. And what's easiest for me is if I tug on the yarn just a little bit, the waist yarn, I can see exactly where that first stitch is. And now I'm just going to go along and slowly pick up each one of these stitches. And then what I always like to do at the end is I like to count them all just to double check that I haven't missed any. Here it's a little bit easier because the stitches are so big, but I always recommend counting them just to double check. So now I finished picking them all up. So then what I do is I just gently tug on my waist yarn and the waist yarn will come out. And if your waist yarn ever gets stuck, you can always cut it and like break it in the middle just to make it a little bit easier in case you ever picked up part of the waist yarn as you were going across. So now the side I want to start knitting from is going to be over here on the right hand side with the knit stitches facing me. So like the outside of the fabric is facing me. So I'm just going to pull it so that basically that left needle point, which is now my left needle point, goes all the way into the work and then I'm ready to um, begin knitting with my other knitting needle. So I do again want to slip that first stitch. So I'm just going to slip that one purl wise. And now the first stitch we're actually going to do here is again going to be a slip slip knit because it's going to be a decrease row. So I'm going to slip the first two, pass them back over again, and then knit them together through the back loop. And the way I join my yarn is I'm just going to take a new strand, leave about 10 inches there, and I just lay it right over the knitting needle and just begin working with it. 
And you will notice on the second row or so, it'll start to loosen up a little bit. So then all I'll do is I'll just tug on the tail just a little bit, just to tighten up that stitch. And then later on, I'll go through and weave it in. But now I'm gonna begin working that decrease row on the back side of my work. And the main difference between the front and the back is just gonna be, you're gonna be working fewer decrease rows. So the majority of the back is just gonna be worked where you just slip the first stitch purlwise, knit all the way across, turn your work, and then slip the first stitch purlwise, and then purl all the way across will be the majority of it once you finish those few decrease rows at the beginning. So the final step to the tank top is just gonna be to sew on shoulder straps. So I decided to make my shoulder straps out of actual fabric. So this is some lightweight denim. It's actually the same denim from my denim and knit pillow. <laughs> if that video has already come out, I'll link it up above or down below. And so I decided I wanted to use this kind of shoulder strap just because I find it's a lot easier than knitting shoulder straps because with knit fabric, you have to worry about it stretching, things like that. They can also start curling. So I just prefer to use the denim. You can also use ribbon or any other kind of fabric. So this one is about one and three quarters inch thick in centimeters. That's four and a half centimeters. And basically what I've already done is I tried on my tank top and I just used one of these bendy tape measures to just measure how long I would like the shoulder straps to be. So I measured nine inches is how long I'd like mine. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna seam using a regular needle and thread, the shoulder strap onto the front side, then I'm gonna measure nine inches, then sew that location onto the back side and just cut off any of my extra fabric that I have. And I just wanted to show you real quick too some other alternatives. So this is the one I was originally gonna use, this denim fabric. And I just found this in the um, trim and ribbon section at Joann's. But then I decided I actually wanted them a little bit thicker. And I think this will look really cute, especially with the colors. But you could definitely use any kind of fabric or anything like that that you wanted to make these shoulder straps. And it would look really cute because then you could really customize it to match the colors you chose. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just show on, sew on my shoulder straps. Thank you for checking out my video today. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.